Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are doing an update to my Pando's Eyeshadows project. This is my first update, so it's not <laughs> gonna be too exciting. But I do have something to roll out, so I figured I should just film my update since it's been over a month anyway, since my intro. Um, so yeah, we'll just get into it because I just need to show you the shades. That is the point of this project. So this project was started by um, Alexandra Shostin. I have her linked down below if you want to check her out. I was influenced to do this project though because of um, Emily and Max and It's Just Steph. So they're my inspiration for this. But it's basically just a project where you try to pan eyeshadows but in my case it's more like a 10 use project because for every shade my goal is to use it at least 10 times because if I was doing this as an actual panning project I would have the same eyeshadows for like two years so yeah that's how I decided to do it so the first shade I have is from my Nikki tutorials and beauty bay palette and of course I got like the shade that I wanted that I would want to pan the least and it's this shade Amsterdam this like bright blue here so I did take some clips of um, when I first rolled these in so I guess I'll show them on the screen somewhere but this is what it's looking like now as you can see, clearly there's no pan on it. And I've actually only used this shade two times. <laughs> and one of them was today. So I'm wearing it today on my lower lash line, but only from like the outer two thirds. Because really I'm having trouble adding this shade to my routine because I wear well, lately anyway, I've been wearing a more like natural makeup look and I just feel like this like cobalt blue just throws everything off. Like even today, I honestly just put this on for the video. I was only wearing the shades on my lid throughout the day, but I was like, I can't just have used this one time. That's terrible. So I did try it as a liner today and I sprayed my brush so that it would really be like a liner because I didn't want to like smoke it out but this is a um, a pressed powder palette no pressed pigment palette and these like very this shade in a pressed pigment is usually hard to work with because it's just that it's not really like a blendable eyeshadow really to get like the most out of this shade you would have to be someone that like packs on color on their lids and just blends it out maybe with a different color because yeah and that's just not really how I do my makeup um especially like now in spring this shade is just like very deep and I mean, it's bright. It's a bright blue, but it's still dark. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. So I still have to use that shade eight times. I'm going to try and figure out a way. I have another look in mind with the shade and another shade that I'm working on. So I will try that. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. But so far, I mean, it doesn't really look like... I mean, there is disturbance, and because I'm using it mostly as like a specific liner, I am using a, like a dense liner brush that's like disrupting the pan, but otherwise, like, this is gonna be in here for eight more uses. I guess I should swatch the shades, right? Like, look at this. <gasps> oh my gosh. It is really pigmented, it's, so that's how it looks like, even like sheared out in a swatch. It's very intense. And I'm not someone, I'm not like one of those people on like Instagram that do like amazing colorful looks. 
I feel like those people would really find this shade very inspiring and know exactly what to do with it, but I'm just not that kind of makeup wear. The next shade I have is like my second least used and it's another blue. <laughs> it's actually kind of like a green blue. It's this shade here from this Makeup Forever Artist Palette, Artist Shadow Palette. Um, this is volume three. So it is like the spring one. So I was happy to roll it in at this point in time. But the formula of these shades is very, uh, how do I say it? It's very thick. It's not easy to blend. So this is another color where like I'd have to really pack it on the lid. I think I did wear this in a video. I don't remember which one. But this shade, like it looks on the lid just like it looks in the pan. And it's not easy to blend out because of like the base. So I'll swatch it and even like swatching it, it's kind of hard to pick up, but you can see like how like, it's almost like a cream. So, and it looks like this. <laughs> so another shade, like, honestly, I like looking at this shade more than I like how it looks on my eyes, if that makes sense. It's like, I don't know, maybe it clashes with my eye color, but I just feel look it looks like borderline 80s makeup <laughs> and I have to be careful with how I use it. But I, I am wearing that today also um, from my inner corner and then blend it into the blue, the dark blue. And that makes it nice. It's just, yeah. I mean, but that's the point of this project. It's random, so you get use out of shades you normally wouldn't reach for. And yeah. So I used this one three times. So seven more uses to go. And if I didn't show you how it looks, that's how it's looking like. So I did, because I used this with the liner brush also, there's like a dip in it. But otherwise, like obviously <laughs> no pan on this shade yet. And I honestly find this palette, I don't often know what to do with it because all the shades are the same like texture. So there's no mattes in this palette either. So yeah, it's just hard for me to know what to do with it but it is a pretty shade it's just very like turquoise the next shade i have i used four times so six more uses on this and it's from my violet boss essentials pro series eyeshadow palette and it's the shade dusty rose this one here so this shade I don't know if you can tell. It's quite dusty, so there is like some disturbance in the pan. Um, and I thought this shade was going to be like a, more like a transition shade for me. But honestly, blended out, it doesn't give me that much color. I guess it, because of the undertone, it's just very subtle on me. But I have been using it... Um, on like the outer corner and to blend some of the other shadows in this project and it's really nice like it blends really easily I just thought it was gonna be a bit deeper like how it looks in the pan so I am wearing that today this is like a really simple well, the top <laughs> is a, a very simple look that I've been doing recently with my pandas eyeshadows and it's with this blended out on the outer corner and kind of inwards um yeah and i like it i just thought it was going to be more deep i guess is what i'm trying to say so i will swatch this too very dusty that's how it looks in a swatch yeah i think the thing with this is as you blend it out it gets quite sheer but i do like 
this kind of shade normally like all over the lid so yeah that's how it looks so six more uses to go on that one the next shade i actually didn't plan this but i'm going in order of like least to most use it just happened to be in that order on my spreadsheet so next we have the boxy charm loves pure or however you would say that it's a boxy charm and pure cosmetics collab obviously i think it was no, it was exclusive to BoxyCharm, of course. And I had the shade Bell. I think this shade looks the most used out of all of these, if you can see. This is another like quite dusty formula that has a lot of kick up. But this is the shade that I have all over my lid. It's a nice pink shade and it's kind of one of those mattes that has some shimmer in it but I feel like the shimmer doesn't translate much onto the lid and yeah so these two having these two shades was very helpful because this one can be used to deepen this one out um, and they're kind of in the same like color family this one's just like a bit more peachy I really like this shade and actually I really like this palette. I am like really liking my pure palettes <laughs> and I didn't think I would because I didn't actually buy any of them myself. I just kept getting them in BoxyCharm but the pure formula is actually really good and easy to use. So I'm actually really happy with it and I did a look with this palette. I used this shade Charmer and um, the cream shade and I think one of these and it was really nice. I'm wearing it in a video also. If I can remember what videos <laughs> I'm wearing these, I'll link them below in the description box in case you want to see it on my eye. I should probably start taking pictures of the looks that I do. I might have some. If I do, I'll post them throughout this video somewhere. But yeah, I need to remember to do that. So yeah, I really liked having this shade. And this one, I feel like doesn't sheer out as much when I blend it as this one does. So yeah, happy to have that one in for five more uses because I used it five times. So this is my last shadow so this is the one I'm rolling out because I used it 10 times and honestly I'm a little scared to roll it out because I feel like this is the shade that was grounding all of these looks. It's from my Urban Decay Jean-Michel Basquiat collab and the shade is Levitation. So as you can see it was extremely easy to use this shade 10 times. Um, honestly, I would probably just keep using it if I left it in this project, but I want to roll things out. That's just funner to me. I don't really know like if you can even see any use because these shades are so like firmly packed. Yeah, I think it's a combination of the fact that they're firmly packed. They're kind of like two-faced in that way but also the way I've been using this. So this palette co comes with a brush and I always use this brush when I use this palette um, because I really like it actually. So the way I apply it, I just, I go like this, like to pick it up because it's quite a light shade. Like even for my skin tone, this is light. It does deepen up on my lid, but you know what I mean. So I pick up quite a bit and I just go like this. So I'm honestly not putting my brush in anywhere specific. So I don't think, I don't see how there's ever going to be a dip <laughs> in this shadow. I've also been using this one a lot just as a side note because it's a really nice matte cream shade to set my lid. So usually when I'm reaching for this palette, I actually use both of those shades. I haven't used any of these other ones only because this color story to me is very fall and 
I'm not very inspired to reach for these shades in the spring. Maybe this like yellowy gold one, but these are just very grungy shades. But yeah, so this shade is obviously what I've been using as my transition shade for every look. And sometimes I just wear this on its own. And actually with this brush, so this is like a, you know, a fluffier side. And then this side is like a pencil brush, um, but more like rounded. So how I use it is I go like this, I put it in my crease, and then I use this side, I dip it in to use on my lower lash line. So this was so easy to use for me. It blended out really nicely. Like I said, it did deepen up a little on my lid, so it did give some definition, especially on like a no makeup makeup day. It gave me just a little something. Kind of like putting bronzer in your crease would, except this is a very light <laughs> bronzer. But yeah, I had a lot of fun with this, but it's time to put it back. And now I'm afraid because <laughs> Like I said, this was like the grounding shade for me. Oh, I should swatch this one. Not that you can really see it on my lid, but I mean on my hand. I'll put it above the blue. Yeah, it kind of just blends into my skin tone on my hand, but I think you can see it a bit there. I am wearing it today, but obviously I have other shades like worked in so yeah so now I'm worried like rolling that out if I roll in another color or another like shimmery shade then I guess like this shade will become my transition I don't know let's see let's see what happens but I'm gonna put this one back in my collection so how I roll in new shades is I use my Tiny Decisions app to randomly pick a palette in my collection and then I use a random number generator to pick the shade that I'm going to be using. So, oh and I can also roll in single shadows. So this is what my, so you can see like this category is my palette slash eyeshadow singles and I'm just going to spin the wheel and hope that it's in focus. Oh, the ABH Sultry palette. Ooh, I might actually be able to like make some good progress on that. So this palette is actually a lot of people's like pan that palette this year I've noticed or it's in some kind of panning project. And I think because the ABH formula is quite I mean, I'm not going to say easy to hit pan on, it depends like how much you do your makeup, but it's very like dusty and just like not firmly packed in the pan, so that could be exciting. And this is like a neutral, okay, this could be good. Don't jinx myself though. <laughs> so I'm going to pull out that palette and then we'll pick the number. So this is what it looks like. Very sparkly holiday <laughs> themed. I actually have a New Year's Eve look with this palette. It's like one of my first videos if you want to see, you know, an old video of mine. <laughs> I'll link it below. But I actually did really like the look that I came up with. And this is what it looks like. So hopefully I don't roll that shade in, but anything else here could be really good for me. So let's see. So there is 14 shades in here. So I'm going to roll a number between 1 and 14. So this is my pretty random. I put the number 1 to 14, then I'll press randomize. 11. So... Oh, <laughs> it's the deepest brown in the palette, the shade Dystopian. Okay, that could be good. It's still a nice grounding shade, and this is the kind of shade I like to use on my outer V. 
So let's swatch this. It's very soft. That's what it looks like. Oh yeah. That is a nice brown. So you can't see this one anymore anyway, but this is my new color story. So I switched out like a very light brown for a very dark brown, basically. So not, not that exciting maybe, but for me, this is a very useful shade and I don't have to wear all of these shades like on my eyes at the same time. I just like to do that because then I, you know, hit my goals faster. But I can just work this in with like my other, you know, my shot, my stash and all of that stuff. So I am pretty happy with this color. So yeah, there's my new color story. So obviously I will aim to use that shade 10 times like everything else. For next update, I think I could probably have this rolled out and maybe the Dusty Rose shade. So, but then we're still <laughs> left with these two. Unless I figure out a way to use these on a more regular basis. But yeah. So that's exciting. I guess. <laughs> right. Well, I hope you liked this video. Even though it wasn't... I mean, there wasn't much change from the intro. But it was still fun for me to pick a, a new random palette to get more use out of. So yeah, if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!